Villarreal have done it. They have finally won their first major trophy in their club history. Yes, their first major trophy. We'll go over that later on in the video, but hello. I'm Adrian, thanks for joining me for this video as we go through and react to Emery's achievement, look at where perhaps Ollie and United could have done better, and more. Let's dive right in. This was not a thrilling match, was it? It was laborious to watch at times. And honestly, as I was saying during the live stream, we should have known. We should have known that Unai Emery is a good manager that has plenty of experience in playing against Ali, a manager who would have studied him well prior to the final, and who will have known, as we all know, how much United struggle to score against teams that like to sit deep. Sit deep they did, they invited pressure on themselves throughout the match, and they did their best to hit United in transition and via set pieces. That was their game plan. They consistently forced United into wide positions, forcing them to work their way from the corner in with two rows of four, sometimes five players to get through into the box. Crosses were pretty much ineffectual as Ruhl Albiol, 35 years old and killing it, and Pau Torres were there to intercept everything. And on the one occasion that Cavani was free, Torres blocked the header. And I believe it was offside. But could be mixing that up with something else. My brain is fried from today. The goals were no worldies in this match either. Well, that's actually, that's not fair to Villarreal, as Perejo's delivery was perfect, and Moreno's finish was well executed as well. United's a strike from Rashford that bounced around before falling to Cavani in the box, who finished cleanly. In extra time, Villarreal were the stronger team. They provided solid pressure, while United... They had a moment or two, but largely didn't do much in extra time. They looked tired, and we'll go over why. But throughout the match, as mentioned earlier, United really struggled to generate any quality chances thanks to that low block that is consistently their undoing. That, and it was generally just a poor performance by their own standards when comparing it to how well they had finished the season domestically, how well they did in the league in general, really, and how they stormed to the Europa League final. For Villarreal, the fact that they weren't dictating the play and dominating United came as absolutely no surprise to anyone, so when we finally made it to the shootout after what felt like the longest two hours of our lives, it was a coin flip at that point. Penalty after penalty flew past the keepers, De Gea came close to stopping on at least one occasion, while Villarreal's Rui came close to stopping a handful of penalties, so close to ending the shootout earlier than it did. And in fact, the probability of the first 21 penalties of the shootout getting converted is as low as 0.41%. That's how rare the shootout was. And it provided another twist in the tale when all the outfield players had taken and converted their penalties, 100% records for them, congrats. And so it came down to the keepers. Ruri converted his beautifully by ripping it into the top corner of the goal. De Gea, his limb strike to the bottom corner was saved by Villarreal's keeper, and that was that. Villarreal won not only their first major European trophy, but their first major trophy full stop. No La Liga titles to speak of, no Copa del Rey, nothing. This is the first trophy they've won since the now defunct Intertoto Cup, just after the turn of this century. A town of 50,000 people, some of them crying tears of joy and disbelief in the stands after witnessing their club beat the mighty or formerly mighty you choose Manchester United. And Unai Emery, five Europa League finals contested and four of them won, the only blotch on his record being Arsenal's loss to Chelsea a couple years ago. You have to hand it to him in Villarreal. Well, granted, United were flat, Villarreal stuck to their game plan, never looked like tiring, and kept their heads. All 11 of them, a true team effort, they all kept their heads in the shootout. And while you praise Villarreal for their stunning achievement as they helped elevate La Liga's record in European finals against foreign opposition to a perfect 16 wins from 16 attempts, there are questions to be asked at United. Now, I've said a while ago, I think at the beginning of this season or something like that, that I didn't want to partake in questioning whether managers should keep their jobs or not. But it is absolutely fair to question what is going on at United right now. Prior to making this final, Villarreal were the nearly men, always failing at the semifinals, so close yet so far from having a crack at glory. They've changed their fortunes now, and Solskjaer will be praying that he can change United's as they have become nearly men under his watch. Four semi-final losses, and now a continental finals loss, will not be a record that Ali would be proud of. And people will point to the fact that they lost to the seventh place La Liga team. It's gonna happen. As far as the game management, not making any substitutions until the 100th minute was 
A strange choice in my opinion, his next substitution came in the 115th minute when his players were visibly tired. Emery on the other hand had switched 5 players out by the 88th minute, so it's no wonder Villarreal were the better side in extra time. They were fresher. I do wonder if the thought crossed Ollie's mind to switch up the keepers as well, just as you know Van Hall had done with Holland back in the 2014 World Cup, bringing on a proven penalty stopper in Tim Krul to aid them in the shootout. Considering Ollie made the call to bring on a bunch of penalty takers such as Alex Telles and Juan Mata, both of which vindicated Ollie by scoring. But he surely would have known De Gea's record of not saving a single penalty since 2016. Dean Henderson, for example, at just 24 years old, has conceded 11 of the penalties he has faced and saved 8 of them. That's 8 saves from 19 penalties. I mean, in De Gea's entire career, he has only saved 11 penalties and conceded 53. Not exactly a glimmering record as Henderson has saved just 3 fewer than De Gea despite only facing 19 to De Gea's 64. It's not exactly an orthodox move to consider swapping your keepers right before a shootout, but when your keeper's penalty saving record is that bad and he hasn't saved one in like 5 years, then it should be front of mind, just as your penalty takers were front of mind. Now of course, it's easy to say that in hindsight, but People will say, well, it's not as if Villarreal's keeper was saving every penalty, and that's true, but what I'm pointing to is the absolutely massive pink elephant in the room that is De Gea's terrible penalty record versus Henderson's great one. So little things like this definitely allow for some room to at least question what Ali's doing at United. I think he will have learned from it, at least you'd hope that he would have. He still needs to learn some game management it seems, he still has to figure out how to get the better of teams that sit deep. It seemed as though Bruno would unlock defenses and Cavani would provide the finishes, but for whatever reason, it just didn't work on this day. And I think that's a credit to Villarreal. That said, Let's wrap up by congratulating Villarreal and all of their supporters once again. This team has been run incredibly well, they have a good youth system, and they have been run well at a financial level as well, doing some clever business last summer to improve their squad. With Cazorla leaving, who by the way must be crying more tears of joy than those fans in the stands, but with him leaving, they picked up Danny Parejo for free and Francis Coquelin for 5 million euros. And as for Emery, here's a quote from an athletic article that I've linked below. Quote, Emery knows very well how to manage such a long competition without burning yourself out, the source says. Through the group stages, Unai used a lot of squad players and youngsters. The rotations worked very well. When he had to, he put in the senior players for 20 minutes to make sure they did not suffer. That comes from his experience in the competition. And that's something that Ali will slash could learn from the man who has won more Europa League trophies now than any other human on earth. And that's it for this video guys, thank you for taking the time to watch and let me know your thoughts down below. With that said, it was a quick one this time wasn't it? With that said, I'm Adrian, this is Rabona TV, and we'll catch you tomorrow for another explainer. Ciao!